Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Cindy and I am giving you a chindi rug update today and then we're going to do something with all of this. So first of all, I wanted to show you how I have separated it. I have my golds and my yellows and my oranges in that box and you'll see that it is all ironed. I have my reds and my pinks and my purples here. I have my blues in their own box. These are greens. I know that looks a little brown, but it's got a lot of green on the on the, the other side. Then here are my uh, browns and my blacks and my whites. Over here, I have an entire box of what I'm going. I'm calling my journal closures, and I'll show you those a little bit more specifically in a moment. And then back over here in this box. These are all, this is the raw material for ta um, tassels, to make tassels out of. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to make a fabric flip out of one of these pieces. And then I'm going to make a tassel out of those. And I'm going to talk to you about some of the things I discovered about chindi rugs as we go along. So I'm going to take a moment here and I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to clear my desk so that we can actually work and we'll get going. Be back in a moment. Okay, we are back and I have cleared my desk of everything but what I want to use today. And before I start talking too much about what's going on, this is the, the piece that I'm going to use to wrap around my journal as a journal closure. Let me see how that's going to work. But I want to talk about what a chindi rug is. Chindi is a word that simply means rag. And when I was a kid growing up, my grandmother had a rag rug. It was a braided rug that I don't know if she made in her youth or her mom made, but it was one of the best rugs ever because it had all these different colors in it. And as a little kid, like, you know, five, six years old, I remember playing on the rug and looking at all the different colors in it and tracing where the different colors went in the rug and through the braid and all. It was really cool. So our grandmothers did braided rugs and this is really where this came from. They would take, uh, families would have scraps that they would, the, the grandmother would save and then she would make, she would weave them into a chindi rug or a rag rug. The only difference between the rug that my grandmother had and this rug is that hers was braided and they would take these ends and they would sew other pieces onto the end and sew the pieces together and then make these big long pieces that they would then braid together. So that was a braided rug and this is a woven rug. The We've talked, I said in my last video, the weft goes this way and the warp goes this way. I may have that backwards. It doesn't matter. Now I'm, now I'm double thinking myself. But this bag, this is all of the string that came out of that. And there are lots of pieces of the, like this. there's a piece of green you will find lots and lots of strings in this stuff because nothing is um, hemmed. It's if they're rags. They're at, at pieces of rags. So I've got all of this string. This is not all of it because I've already made a project out of it, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, plus, I've given some of it away to a friend. So this I've got enough string here to last me for the rest of my life. I can use this in... At tags, you know, as, as pieces off of tags, I can use it a whole bunch of different ways. And I'm going to show you one of the ways I use it, used, have used it right now. One of the things I did was I made some tassels. And we're going to take a look at how to do these. These are pretty easy, but we're going to do them with the other pieces. So I just did a little bit and then I took a little ribbon and put a little ribbon around it. I left my piece here until such time as I decide where I want to hang it. But I thought, okay, that was really easy. And then this one, I put a little lace around, like a little skirt, and then I need to get a button. And I put a button up here, or up here, 
I'm not exactly sure where the button goes, but the button becomes the face. Isn't that cute? So that those are made out of these. Because one of the things that you need to remember, this is my set of notes here. One of the things you need to remember is that these rugs are ways of using up waste. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Well, they have reused and recycled all of these scraps of fabric, which is wonderful. And then I went and tore it apart. I want to make sure that none of this goes into the landfill. So I want to use it, and I've got three different ways I'm going to use it. Um, one of the things I do want to say, though, I have washed this piece and then re-ironed it. Um, I have not yet washed these, but I will be. The I'm So I take the rug apart. You saw that last week. And... I spent several days ironing them out. It took me a while because, you know, ironing's not my favorite task to do, but I got them all ironed out. And as I'm ironing and there's this smell that's coming off of them. And I realized these are rags that may be somewhat industrial. And they've probably been sitting around on floors and then they get woven into rugs. And then the rugs, who knows what they're doing with the rugs. None of these rugs were wrapped in plastic, which is a good thing. But that means that they've been in boxes and whatnot. I would finish ironing and my hands would be so dusty. I should have washed the rug first. So if you are taking apart a chindi rug, my advice to you is to, while the rug is still together... Throw it in your washer, put it on the line or over the back of a chair and let it dry. Wash it first, because now I'm washing all of these individually as I use them, because they are, uh, they're dusty. They're just plain old dusty, which is fine, but learn from that. Um... So I've talked about the strings. I have talked, oh, the flips. So I've, I've separated things out so I could do three different things with them. I can make a flap, I can make a journal tie, and I can make a tassel. And today what I'm going to do, this is my new idea journal. Now, they had a great cover. This is from a hymnal. I tore the hymnal piece out. I put a little bit of lace on, on the side of it just to kind of dress it up. And right now, the two pieces of my uh, journal are just kind of sitting here and I will I'm not going to put them in until I have a couple more pages and then I'll sew them all together so I'm going to take a little bit of Fabri-Tac now could you sew these absolutely there is no reason you cannot sew these in I am not sewing them in because I'm not a seamstress you know that from videos past so I'm just going to use a little bit of Fabri-Tac on the top seam and then I'm going to put it in here I'll let that dry a little bit and hang on I have a little bit of nope not that one there it is I have a little bit of lace and I'm just going to throw yeah grab my scissors put that back in my lace thing and put a little bit more I'm going to make sure I'm getting back here in frame put a little bit of Fabri-Tac again around the top Add a little bit of lace. Now, like I said, if you're a seamstress and you have a sewing machine ready, you can certainly do this with a, you can sew that right in on your page. But now I have a little fabric flip that goes into my idea book. So I'm using that so I don't forget that I can do that. Although I'm pretty sure that from here on in, Every single journal that I do is probably going to have a fabric flip. And then I have this piece 
which I purposely did not, but it's too thin to do anything with, really. Um, so this now becomes my closure for my idea book. Isn't that great? Bring me back into... So now I have a closure and I have a fabric flip. So that's two things that I can do with it. And the other thing I can do with it is to make a uh, tassel. So I've got this whole box. These are all pieces that really are just too thin to do anything with. And I've got a bunch of these. So I want one of you, I want one of you, because I like the purple. I'm gonna pick, I think, five pieces out of here. Um, and I'm not really worried about length at this point. There's a little pink one. What else do I have? I have this pretty blue that actually is a lot of white on it, but that's all right. We're gonna take that one. So that's three. And then what else do I have here? Ooh, that's pretty. There's a little bit more purpley. That's four. And I have this pink. That's five. Okay, all the rest of these are going back in the box. We'll deal with those at some other time. Get rid of that oh, off of here. Okay, you really want to not be here. This is what I said about the strings. There are strings everywhere. You're going to be constantly pulling off those loose strings. Okay, so what I want now is a piece. This is going to be a tassel. You want it double your length. Now, this one is a pretty long tassel, and I purposely did this one um, shorter. So this one is, oh, top to bottom, about seven inches, and this one is eight inches. And that's going all the way down to here. I could trim it off here and make that an, a shorter one. Um, but we're not going to worry about that one right now. I'm going to use this kind of as my guide. Let me grab my fabric scissors. Makes it a little bit easier. And I'm going to do this one a little bit longer. So there, that one's done. We'll throw that one back in the box. And because I don't necessarily want them all the same length. Throw that one back in the box. I'm using five because remember, you're going to double it. So I'm putting 10 in here, um, but I could go, I actually want to use this end of it. All right. Let me throw my fabric scissors off. I don't like them. I don't keep my fabric scissors in the same place as I keep everything else. Uh, because I like to make sure that I never, ever, ever do paper with them. I thought I had some short strings in here. I know I do somewhere, but I'm not going to search for them. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of my string, and the first thing I'm going to do is tie together the midpoint. And like I said, I'm, you know, I'm not worried too much about it. Okay, tie over and under, tie, over and under, and tie. This tie won't necessarily stay on it as we go through, but it helps to keep things together as I'm working. So the next thing I want to do is to pull it over and then grab, I'm going to use more of my string. Could I use another piece of this? Absolutely. Now, my this isn't quite as middle as I would like it to be, so I'm going to pull that over a little bit. Okay. Nor is that really as tight as I'd like it to be. You know what? I'm going to stop. I'm going to cut that and do it again because I really want that to be much tighter. Let's just take the piece. It's going to be easier to do it this way, I think. I'll tie it nice and tight this time. Because it's just easier if they're not flopping all over the place. There. Okay, now they're tight. 
Okay, so now, so what that does is that when I go to put a ribbon on this and actually hang it from someplace, I'm not trying to find the middle of all of these strings. Can you imagine on this how hard that would be to find the middle on all of those strings? So with the tie there, that just tells me exactly where my middle is. So when I go to tie a ribbon around it and actually hang it from something, then it'll be easier to, to do. So that's what that's there for. Okay, let me grab more of this string. And I kind of have, I'm making a bit of a mess of my roll, but we'll worry about that later. Okay, and I'm going to come around here and I'm going to tie, I don't know that I want to tie this to start with. Okay. Need to decide about where I want it. I'm going to put it right here. I'm actually going to wrap that a couple of times and then tie it. I don't know if you've made tassels before. If you have, there's probably easier ways to do it, but I just have always done it this way and it's not a big deal. They're pretty easy to make. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I want to pull those out. I'm actually going to snip those off a little bit so they're not in my way. They're a little bit long. Okay, I've got my string here. I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to wrap this one around a couple of times. I'm going to make it a collar. I'm going to give it a collar of yarn. I'm going to pull it as tight as I want. There we go. I want that other piece to stick out just a little bit because I'm going to tie to it. Okay, I'm going to go a couple more times around. All right, and then I'm going to cut my string here and I'm going to put a square knot in here. So right over left and under, come on, under, right over left and under, there we go, under. And then left over right and under. As a Girl Scout, this was one of the first knots I ever learned. I learned a lot of them, but this was the first one that I ever learned. There. And now I have a tassel. Isn't that cool? Now, can we dress this up? Absolutely. Um, we can, um, you could put a feather in there. You could put beads in there. I don't have beads. I don't do a lot with jewelry. Um, I am going to dress up that edge a little bit. I've used a little bit of purple and a little bit of pink and a little bit of blue. Hang on. I'll be right back. Let me grab a, a ribbon. Okay, I'm back. I found a little bit of purple ribbon that I'm going to use here for this. But there's really no reason you couldn't use another piece off of, like, the the this particular one. Actually, this one, I might end up ironing that piece. That's really kind of nice. There's, now that I tore off the, the really raggedy end, there's actually quite a bit of, of nice material on here. Okay, not that piece. Let me find a different one. Okay, so I could certainly do it like this. But to me, that's, I mean, I like it. But it's kind of, um, it's fat. It's very fat. And again, if I open this one up, it's very small. Let me go to this end. Well, that end's already open. All right. I think I'm going to end up sticking with... There we go. We'll do this one. Now, I could do it and tie it. Let's use this instead. Rather than the ribbon. I don't like the ribbon on there. It doesn't quite match. See, I'll show you. See that ribbon? It's really pretty, but it doesn't quite match the whole aesthetic of the chindi. Okay, if I do this, I like that, don't you? Okay, let's chop off these pieces. 
get rid of those. Don't get rid of this. Leave that one that's holding that until you decide you're going to hang it on something because you're going to want to be able to get through that little hole. Okay, so don't take that one off. No matter what you do, leave it on. Okay, I'm going to take this and wrap it around here like this. And then I'm going to cut it just a little bit longer than I actually need. I'm going to take my fabric tack and I'm going to put my fabric tack all around my collar. Because I want this this cloth to stick to the collar. And actually that ended up being exactly the right amount I needed. Okay, now, because there is extra cloth, I'm gonna add a little bit of Fabri-Tac into here. Squish that closed. And we're going to just sit here and hold it a little bit. So three things you can do with your chindi, with your rags. You can make a tassel. You can make a journal closure. Or you can make a fabric flip. Three different things you can do with your chindi cloth. All right, and there it is. Now, I, if I chose to, I could put this through. Let me find my center. When I was talking about doing that before. And now I can hang it on off of a, a journal. Bring that down a little bit. This piece is trying to escape a little bit. There we go. And you can do whatever adjustments you need to do. But there you go. You could hang it that way. You could hang it with another piece of ribbon. You could hang it with some string. You can do all sorts of things. And it can go right off the edge of your journal. I don't happen to have a hole in here at the moment. But wouldn't that be cool? Right off the edge of the journal. All right. So there's some things you could do with your chindi cloth on this fabulous Friday. I hope that you are having a great time. Uh, the biggest thing I would say is wash your rug first. Before you take it apart, wash the rug. Otherwise, you will be washing pieces individually and, oh my glory, making a whole lot more work for yourself. All right. Till later. Uh, oh, by the way, if you, I wanted to show you one more thing. Before I forget... One more thing. I almost closed off and I wanted to show you this. Do you remember me putting my pieces of washi that, and you know, you use washi and then you clip it off. You got an end piece or you go to rip it off and, and it rips funny. Um, I've been putting them on this piece of scrap paper. This is just a, a half of a, a sheet for a play that we were doing. We need, needed marriage certificates. And so I had a whole bunch of these left over. I, I just used half of one of them. And I've been putting these washi on them for just about, this is about a year's worth of washi. And I recently said, okay, that's it. I can't fit any more washi on it. I am starting a new washi piece. So there's my new washi piece. Uh, it has one piece of washi on it that was extra long off of something that I did. And I mod podge the top of it. And then it was still kind of, I was still worried about pieces falling off of it. So I took a piece of napkin. I have all of these backs from napkins and I save them all because um, I usually use them to wipe the top of my Fabri-Tac because, you know, this has a tendency to do its thing. Um, but this time I put the, the, the napkin down 
and Mod Podged over, actually I Mod put mod, a layer of Mod Podge down. I put this down, I Mod Podged over the top of it again. So this has three layers of Mod Podge on it. The first one that I put down and then the two layers when I put the napkin over the top of it. And didn't that come out gorgeous? I don't know if I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to cut it up at this point. I, I'm probably, I'm going to back it with something. Um, probably just another piece of, uh, uh, maybe a print paper or I might choose just to do like you know like this so that I can if there's some writing space on it I have still have strings everywhere because of that stuff um it's like glitter you know you, you use a little bit of glitter and all of a sudden glitter is has taken over the craft room <clears throat> excuse me a little bit of frog in my throat there <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about that. But I have cut off my napkin. I cut it down and trimmed it down. And I think this would make a very cool page in a journal. I was going to make um, cards out of it, but I, I think I like it better as a page in a journal. Might even make a nice journal cover. What do you think? Leave a comment down below as to what you think I should do with this now that I have created it. But that is completely made of scraps. Washi scraps, a scrap of paper, a scrap of napkin. This is all scraps. And isn't that, I just love how it came out. All right. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and click like if you've enjoyed it. YouTube likes it when you like me. And um, I guess that's it. Have a great day and I will see you on Marguerite Miller Challenge tomorrow. Till later, this is Cindy signing off.